My name is Annika Scott and I'm the principal horn of the Irish Baroque Orchestra. The way this instrument works is I buzz my lips um, faster or slower, so the faster I buzz the higher the pitch. And when I buzz my lips into the mouthpiece of the instrument, I'm able to pick out the notes of what we call the harmonic series. So, um, this instrument is in F at the moment, so that's the harmonic series of F. But if I change this crook, this bit of tubing, for this longer one, it might look the same, but this one's got an extra coil round. Um, so now the instrument's lower, so that series of notes, that harmonic series, is also going to be lower. And you can hear that when I go to the top of the instrument, I've almost got a scale. But then when I come down from that, I've got lots of gaps. And that's why Baroque composers writing for the instrument either have to write very high parts for us, because that's where we get closest to having enough notes to make the melodies, or they write really triadic kind of fanfare-like writing for us. So those are the two ways that we normally are asked to play during the Baroque era. Like most period horn players, I started off as a modern French horn player and I was first introduced to the classical hand horn, classical natural horn. So natural horn just means it doesn't have any unnatural valves. Um, it's called a hand horn because we put our hand into the bell of the instrument. And it's the instrument and the technique that classical composers such as Mozart, Haydn and Beethoven would have known. Horn players are quite unusual in historically uh, formed performance because we normally start with the classical instrument and then go back to the Baroque instrument whilst for most of my friends and colleagues who play woodwind strings or keyboards it's a little bit more normal when they're learning historical instruments to start with the Baroque instruments and then go forward to the classical instruments. The exception is clarinet players, they're like us. So I started off playing the classical hand horn and then the thing that really made me want to play this instrument was hearing a recording of the wonderful uh, Bach Mass in F, the Lutheran Mass in F. That was a, it was a recording by Philip Herrewegger's group, Claudium Vocal Ghent, and I just remember hearing the second movement of that and really, really wanting to learn to play this instrument. It's, a, it's such a it's, a, it's a really exciting bit of horn writing. Probably my favourite thing about the Baroque horn is you can't hide. It's partially, it's partially to do with the way the music's written for it. Quite often we have these really bravura numbers to play, but also it's the sort of instrument that it's a, it's a risky instrument to play because we're having to pick out these notes sort of from nowhere and you really have to go for it when you're playing the Baroque horn and that's that that's that's a real really exciting feeling so I, I love playing the Baroque horn particularly and the repertoire because it's it's such an exhilarating ride <laughs> I would say that one of my favorite pieces for the Baroque horn has to be the Brandenburg Concerto number no. one and it's partially because this is a really early work for us. It's one of the first pieces that we have written. And at that point, the horn was quite new to the musical world. You get the feeling right at the beginning that Bach has written for these two hooligans who've just come straight from, straight from the hunting field. And the, the first things we have to play are these... Um,
these fanfares and yeah you you you, you feel a, a bit of a thug when you come in with those but it changes so quickly and bark is immediately writing instead of us being these gate crashers to this concerto grosso we become suddenly very suave and sophisticated <laughs> Throughout this work, with this work, every so often there's this feeling that we can't hide our true identity, and every so often there's these little interjections or bursts of fanfares. And I think playing Brandenburg One as a Baroque horn player, it's such such a great piece to play. It's such an exciting piece to play because we're constantly having to negotiate being both this thing straight from the hunting field but also this more refined being and it's, it's great fun uh, the games you can play going from one to the other. <laughs> 